Hello, today we're going to install the SolarWinds backup product on an Amazon EC2 instance. We'll start by connecting to the Amazon EC2 console uh, and going into the current running instances. Uh, here I can pick an existing instance and uh, connect to that. We've already taken care of all the backend connections and security passwords and so on. Uh, so it's just a straight remote desktop connection now into that machine. Once we get the instance connected, uh, we're going to start by opening up a uh, web page and connecting to the backup.management console. Uh, this way we can create a new backup client and use our uh, automated deployment methodology to install uh, the backup client itself. We'll start here by going over and uh, specifying the end customer that we want to utilize for uh, this demonstration. Uh, we'll choose uh, private branded here. And then we'll click add uh, from the upper left hand corner of the management console. So you could do a regular deployment here, but in this case we're going to automate this through uh, our automated deployment uh, scripting capabilities. We'll select next. Uh, here you can see uh, this is the specific command line that we'd utilize to install uh, this device in an unattended mode. Uh, so we're going to copy that to our clipboard and then we're going to click on the download backup manager link uh, to download the most recent copy of the backup manager itself. Uh, this will go into the uh, local users download directory. While it's downloading, I'm going to uh, open up a, an elevated command prompt on this uh, local machine and navigate to the uh, user administrator download directory. Now once this download completes um, I can simply copy and paste that uh, command uh, that I grabbed earlier to start that unattended installation. And the nice thing with unattended installation is it's going to automatically create the device name, the password, and it will assign its own encryption key using AES 256-bit encryption. Um, and then you can always request a passphrase at a later time if you need to redeploy or uh, reinstall this backup manager or perform some type of uh, disaster recovery. So now we've ran that, we'll give it just a couple moments uh, to uh, begin its installation, download the or uh, update the various components that it needs, um, and then we will uh, switch back over to the management console here and uh, refresh uh, our UI. So we'll do a quick refresh and we can see that, um, or we should see we have a new device listed here. There we go. There's our new device. It was created through the unattended installation and we're going to immediately launch the backup client. Uh, this is going to open a connection or a tunnel uh, from our storage node into that remote device. Uh, you'll see that come up here in just a moment. And we can get started. We'll go immediately to the backup tab. We can create some selections with files and folders. Uh, if I'm using profiles, um, I could have automatic selections. I can have automatic schedules defined here. Um, so I could save a couple of these manual steps. But now we have selections, we're going to kick that backup off. And we'll see this that it starts to uh, begin processing immediately. Now, in this particular instance, I'm just using a free instance of uh, Amazon EC2. Uh, I think this is a Windows 2012 or Windows 2016 instance. And it's just one virtual CPU and one gig of virtual RAM. Uh, typically the recommendation is going to be to create your VMs with uh, you know, a minimum of two virtual cores. Uh, that way the backup process is not going to interfere with any of the um, specific workload for that instance. Uh, but you'll be able to see here that even with that one virtual CPU, um, you know, we're able to kick that backup off and, uh, and run it. Now, if you want to look at a little bit more detail here, um, you can go back into the management console. We're going to add a couple additional columns. Uh, we'll start out by adding a column for the computer model number, uh, and we'll select that and save. And then we'll come back in here in just a moment. Uh, we'll add another column for uh, the manufacturer. There we go, computer manufacturer. And as we scroll in over to the right here, you can see that uh, you know we report this as a Zen um, uh, HVM uh, DOMU computer, um, and that's just the way that it reports itself uh, from an operating system or from a, a manufacturer uh, level. 
If we look at performance, uh, we can see here that uh, between the Backup Manager and Internet Explorer, we are using you know between 89 and 90% of that virtual CPU. So like I said, uh, adding multiple virtual CPUs here will uh, increase your performance capability. And then of course we're utilizing a good portion of that one gig uh, of RAM. So this backup is still running. We see it's identified about 137,000 files uh, or so to backup. If we open up uh, the connection test, um, we can do just a quick uh, ping of our service to make sure that all the connectivity is fine and everything is working properly. Um, here you can see just the sample upload at uh, uh, looks like 22 megabits per second, uh, sample download at 18 megabits per second, and that's running in parallel with this uh, processing activity right now.